Welcome to the NCO Journal Podcast. I'm Sergeant Alan Brutus. Today I'm joined by Mr. Tom Kelly from the Fort Leavenworth Education Center. Sir, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. Today we're talking about civilian education. And before we get started, can you just tell me a little bit about your background, both in the military as well as your education? Uh, yes, Sergeant Bruce. Um, I joined the Army in 1982. I joined as a Bradley Fighting Vehicle Mechanic. Um, I was selected for recruiting duty, probably about my seventh year in the Army. Went out there for three years. And uh, at the end of that, I transitioned over to retention. And I retired as the retention sergeant major at Fort Riley. I, I was a sergeant major for there for about six years. Um, immediately after retiring, I, I was selected to be an education counselor. And I did that for probably about three years um, at Fort Riley. And then I moved around since then. I've done it. Uh, I was the uh, education counselor for Kansas, um, Nebraska, and I Iowa and Missouri for the Army Reserve for about a year and a half. So I have that experience. And then um, I came here as the ESO. So I've been in education after retiring for almost 11 years. Okay. And uh, in your own personal education, uh, can you tell me a little bit about that, when you got started and uh, where you're at today? Uh, so I earned my associate degree at the University of Maryland over in Germany. And then I earned my uh, bachelor's degree from Northwood University while I was in Michigan. And um, then my master's degree with K-State um, while at Fort Riley. And this was all while you were serving? Yeah, all that was while I was serving. I uh, used tuition assistance um, to, to pay for all that. After I uh, retired from the Army, um, I went to Iowa State University, um, completed all the coursework for a Ph.D., um, when I finished the coursework, it's about the time I, I left and went to Fort Leonard Wood, so I didn't um, complete the dissertation process. So ABD is what they call it, all but dissertation for the PhD, and I probably won't finish that. I think I'm going to do another master's degree here pretty soon. So obviously education has uh, become a passion of yours uh, throughout between your military time and then even post-military. Can you tell me why it's important for soldiers just in general to seek uh, higher education? Sure. I, I think that like you said, it has become a passion with me because what I've seen about education is that education changes lives. Um, it can make a big difference um, in not only the soldier's life, but their family and um, the children. Uh, people that get education, if you, um, they've done studies on it, and um, when, when um, parents are educated, uh, it does have a trickle-down effect um, to the children, so that's important. But for soldiers specifically, uh, promotion in the Army. You know, I think most soldiers know that for a um, sergeant and staff sergeant, you know, you have a promotion point worksheet. Um, when you attend college, you're going to get uh, promotion points. Um, so promotion while you're in the Army, but also, you know, not everybody's going to make a career out of the Army like I did, maybe like you're doing. Um, some people get out, and so unemployment when you get out of the Army. Having that college degree, uh, you put that on your resume, and that degree will open some doors for you. It'll get your foot in the door for an interview, I think. So that that's kind of important. Um, and that's backed up by statistics. The Department of Labor uh, statistics show that um, high school graduates, um, the unemployment rate is twice as high for high school graduate as it is for college graduates. So if you have that bachelor's degree, you know, you're a lot more likely to be employed. And not just employment, but how much money you make. Um, a high school um, a ma a person with a master's degree makes three times as much as someone that drops out of high school. That's significant. Like you said, helping, helping families. Yeah. Um, so with that, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of colleges and universities out there. What are some of the things that soldiers and, and NCOs can guide their soldiers as well? Uh, what are some of the things that they should look at when selecting the college that they decide to attend? That, that is a, a pretty broad subject. There's a lot to it, but some of the key things, um, they're just things that you just normally think of. You know, who has the degree that you want? You know, that's going to be one of the primary things you're going to start with is um, what degree do you want and what colleges have it. And we have um, search engines available to help soldiers find those schools. Um, one of them is TA Decide. You know, that's a Department of Defense-sponsored website where colleges uh, throughout the country can report all the degrees that they have, and they put them in a database, and that search engine uh, filters through that database so soldiers can find out, you know, who offers the degree and whether it's uh, offered online or if it's offered seated only. So that's a website that's really helpful. Another website 
is a college navigator that they can use to find the degree that they want to that they want to pursue. That one is to, uh, sponsored by the Department of Education. Again, sa similar system. All those colleges can r report the degrees that they offer, and you know that make you know uh, culminates with a database that you can search through that search engine. Um, it's important once you find out what colleges you know are out there to find out you know to understand w what their accreditation is. You know, are they regionally accredited or are they are they nationally accredited? A lot of people don't understand that process. Like I said, a lot of people that join the Army, they're called what we call first-generation college students. They don't have um, the background to know all the ins and outs of college education, and that's what we're for at the Education Center. Just like when I was a young soldier, I had some captains and some um, NCOs, some officers and NCOs that helped me, you know, understand that process. And... Um, not everybody um, has a leader that's familiar with it, so we have an education center on post that can guide soldiers through that. We always encourage people to do that. Um, the difference between national and regional accreditation, um, uh, regional accreditation has been around the longest. National accreditation hasn't been around quite as long. Um, regional accreditation is generally more transferable. So if you go to a college that is regionally accredited, um, it's kind of counterintuitive. You think a lot of soldiers think, well, national accreditation is the best. Well, I'm not saying one's better than the other. What we're saying really is that um, if regionally accredited colleges, um, the credit's more transferable than it is if you go to a nationally accredited school. And by transferable, you mean if I decide, you know, hey, this program is not what I want to ultimately do. I go to another school yes. or seeking a, a higher uh, a higher level degree. And that's a lot of times what happens in both those cases. You know, soldiers move around a lot. I tell soldiers, you know, and it's true, I've been to nine different colleges because of my military career. You're moving around. My son, he's 21 years old, not in the Army, and he's been to four colleges already because, you know, he has me as a dad that understands the process. And, and, know, and, and, know, and we know that as long as it's, you know, regionally accredited um, school and you get a, you know, see or better usually, that credit is going to transfer to any other college generally that you want to go to. Not, not, not every time. The other important thing besides, you know, accreditation, besides do they have the degree you want, but what's the reputation of the institution? There's different ways to find that out. Some of the key factors that we look at are graduation rates and loan default rates, different things like that. And there's some different programs that can help soldiers, you know, review that. And we can show them how to do that at the education center. So what about cost? College is, uh, college is far from cheap. And I know we have tuition assistance, in the army, what are some of the other things, you know, if it's, if a soldier decides, hey, this this college has exactly what I want, but it costs more than the two hundred fifty dollar uh, per credit hour, how can a soldier help to offset that cost or potentially come out of pocket, come with nothing out of pocket? All right, there's um, a lot of things that we want to do, and I want to talk about TA just a little bit. I, I know that the question is. Once they have TA, what can we do um, beyond that to pay for additional costs? But um, one thing about tuition assistance is at the Education Center, we are the proponent for TA. So um, soldiers can make mistakes with TA, and we like for them to come to the Education Center, learn the process. Um, we're willing there at the Education Center to help soldiers um, request their TA every time if that's what they need help with. The key thing about tuition assistance to remember is to request your TA um, before the class starts. Never wait till Friday to request TA for a class that starts on Monday. You may have a problem with your account, you may be on hold, and then when Monday comes around, you come in for us to help you and it's too late. So always request your tuition assistance at least two weeks in advance. That's kind of the um, rule that we go by. And then on top of TA, well usually for an undergrad program, most of the time you can find um, a program that has what you want that's a good reputable program for under the tuition cost. A lot of the colleges keep their uh, tuition prices set at 250 or below specifically for that reason because they know that uh, most soldiers are not going to want to pay anything out of pocket. Um, but if you're maybe you're working on a master's degree or the only place that has that program that you want is more expensive than the cap, then you can look at things like um, FAFSA, which is a free application for federal student aid. That's where um, you can, in that, in that application, um, you're reporting your income, how many dependents you have, um, how many people in the family are going to college. And based on those areas, it will tell you if you're eligible for a Pell Grant. And when you're talking about grants, grants are something you don't have to pay back. So even, even if um, 
the tuition is below the TA cap and it's all covered by TA, a soldier can apply for Pell Grant to supplement um, other costs of education like books that they pay. Um, if they get enough money, they can pay their car payment with that Pell Grant money, um, which is good, you know. But um, a lot of times what we encourage the soldiers to do, if they're doing Pell Grant and it's all covered by TA, put that money off to the side because you know you only get 16 credit hours of TA per year and that can help you continue to progress through your, your degree throughout the year, even after TA runs out. So Pell Grant's another one. Scholarships, scholarships are a little harder. You know, uh, it's a process that you have to go through in order to get those. Um, so a lot of soldiers kind of shy away from that because there's other ways that are a lot of times easier. Uh, but we do have a full list of scholarships that for uh, soldiers and for spouses and for children um, of the spouses. And then, um, of course, the GI Bill. You know, um, the GI Bill is a great... Um, benefit, or I'll say entitlement, really. A GI Bill is an entitlement that you earn um, because of your service. And if they want to, you know, um, start using that, take a look at using it, um, we are probably, you know, we are the subject matter experts on Port Leavenworth for the GI Bill. We're not the proponent for the GI Bill. Um, but I often tell soldiers that, you know, we, we can answer um, 99% of their questions about the GI Bill. The ones that we can't or how much they've used and stuff like that, but we can get that answer for them by making a phone call or going to eBenefits and checking there. And and I'm assuming that's true of all, all education centers across the Army. They can all help and assist with these yeah. any of these questions because I know you had mentioned here at the Fort Leavenworth. Yes. that It should be the same throughout the Army. Again, I've been in a number of them, Riley, Leavenworth, Leonard Wood, and it's worked the way uh, all the three of the education centers I've worked at, and then also as a soldier, of course, traveling throughout the Army. Sometimes, just like anything, you get better assistance than you do other places. Um, we pride ourselves here at Leavenworth in offering um, the soldiers um, world-class assistance. And uh, in addition to paying for it, uh, you had mentioned cost. One way to save costs is to um, what I call get a head start or you know have transfer credits. Uh, can you tell me some of the ways that soldiers can kind of get that head start uh, in their education? Well, one of the um, initial ways and the ways that we always start with um, is did they attend college before they come in the Army? If they, if they went to a um, school before they come in the Army, by Army regulation, you have to request those transcripts and have that credit applied to what you do now. Um, but beyond that, of course, um, the training that you received in the military is worth college credit. Um, so for that, um, we use the joint services transcript. So while you're in the office, you first come in there and we're trying to get your account established. You picked out your college. So we're um, setting up your Go Army Ed account. At that time, we'll also help you order your, the soldier order their JST and send that to the college that they've chosen. Um, so with those previous college transcripts and the JST, that's a couple real quick ways that soldiers can um, accumulate college credit right off the bat. And then, of course, other ways are through CLEP and da uh, um, Dante's tests or DSSTs. Um, those tests right now are not available at Fort Leavenworth on post for free, but the local co surrounding colleges like Park, KCK, different colleges can um, give those CLEP tests for a minimal fee. Once we um, get the CLEP test established on post, which um, I'm working with, uh, we're working right now with Barton County Community College, they're going to be um, what we call our National Test Center. Um, so far, um, we have to do some wiring in a building. We've, we've, we've placed the work order to get that done with DPW, and we've um, done the MOU, which is Memorandum of Understanding. So we think that um, Barton will probably be offering CLEP and DSSTs in about um, – three months, two to three months. And, that, th and that's here on Fort Leavenworth? Yeah, that'd be on Fort Leavenworth. It'd be completely free for soldiers. Uh, family members would have to pay um, a fee for that. Um, and the, what CLEP tests are, I think most people know, but college level examination program is what CLEP stands for. Um, DSSTs, um, similar tests, just a different company. Um, both were, if you look at the history of them, were started by the Department of Defense. It's um, tests in a subject area um, that when they demonstrate that they know um, what a person that just finished that course uh, and they go with the 50% range, you know, uh, the medium person there, if they can score as high as that person, then they will get college credit for that course without taking the course. So what other advice would you give uh, soldiers looking to, you know, either, you know, start education or pursue further, you know, education such as a master's degree or, or something to that effect? Well, the, the Biggest thing is to get started. 
you know, a lot of times, you know, we're procrastinators. We have other things that take our attention, you know, things that are important. Our family's important. Our job with the military is important. But if you get started on education, take one class the first time. We always recommend that. Get started, and you'll find out that it happens a lot more quickly than you think. You'll work through that process. And what you might find, at least for me, is you might even enjoy it. You enjoy stretching your mind. You know, um, like I say, education will help um, give you self-confidence. It will help um, with self-improvement, and it, it will make a difference in your, in your life. Um, some other things, I think some of them, I, well, this I haven't mentioned yet, and that is when you start college, do the best you can. When you're taking your college cl classes, those are going to be on your permanent record. You know, you'll, you'll never get rid of those grades. Uh, it's like people say, it's a little different than this, but, you know, one thing they can't ever take away from you is education and what you've learned. Well, they also can't take those grades away. <laughs> so do the best you can on them. Um, and you can use that, again, um, make sure your leadership knows that you're going to college. Um, because on your NCOER, the, when I was a soldier, we had the area called competency. And if you make the dean's list, that's a, that's a reason for excellence back then. I know it's a little different now, but there's still your NCER um, that can, you know, feed into that based on, you know, how good your grades are and everything. Um, so request TA early. I mentioned that already. That's the biggest problem that we have and the ones that hurt soldiers most, that's why it's a big problem for us, is when soldiers don't request their tuition assistance early enough. Then they end up not getting the TA for that term or what have you. Well, sir, um, is there anything else that you have? No, I, um, again, I, I did want to say that, you know, I, I mentioned this, I think, at the beginning, but I want to say at the end is we're here to help you come to the Education Center. Um, don't be a stranger. We do try to, you know, have a friendly atmosphere in the Education Center, and we definitely want to help you. So come by and let us do that. Thank you again for joining us and being part of the NCO Journal podcast. To my fellow NCOs, you can join in the conversation by following us at facebook.com slash NCO Journal and also follow us on Twitter at NCO Journal. Put your knowledge to print, submit articles, and get published through the NCO Journal. Until next time, I'm Sergeant Alan Brutus.